Hello everybody, this is another Satellive video. My name is Thomas Neumann. I'm the developer of Satellive and today I will show you some of the new features of the upcoming version. This uh, new version will hopefully be available in, during the next week. One thing that is new is a trigger level that has been added to the impulse response measurement. Um, you see a new button over here, which means a threshold. Uh, what is this for? So uh, in normal operations, there is still a threshold available for the impulse response, but it has been a fixed one, a very low um, level. So in most cases, as soon as you have a mic connected, you, you will see something moving in your impulse response. Um, last week I did a small video about synchronizing to microphones and this is what where this feature came from. So if we have a situation where we have two mics picking up the same source, like a snare top and a snare bottom mic, we have two mics and we can also use a dual FFT to compare those two mics. So um, opposite to normal operation of uh, room measurements where we have a direct feedback loop to feeding the signal and the reference input, now we are looking on two microphones. So we don't expect something linear, but we want to see the relation of the both uh, signals. So for example, let's go here. We have two mics on a snare. This is one. And this is the other one. And I'm feeding both uh, to the two sides of uh, Sad Life. And you will hear a mono addition of both signals. <coughs> but in my Sad Life, I have some on the right and on the left input signal. So, um, if we look at the pulse response graph, you see we have some uh, increased energy at the sand, near the center, but we don't get any information. And you see the traces wo uh, moving all the time. So, um, I just want to act only on the snare data, so I uh, applied a threshold and so you see the housing gets a little more stable but still we don't see a lot of information even if we are running with 16 averages here. So um, for the task we want to do we want to match two mics um, we just uh, need another kind of information and this kind of information could be the correlation graph because the correlation is not uh, looking on the frequency response something like that it just it just tells us which delay we need to have to to get both signals as similar as possible and so we can enable it using the KView button over here. Um, show KView and now you see we have the KView here. I just reset the averages and it's also building up here. And you see uh, how it changes with each head on the snare. And you also see that we have not only one peak over here, we have different peaks. We have uh, the trace also jumping up and down. So um, we just set it even harder, the whole thing. And now you see it's re working really only on snare hits. And you see we have now uh, stable trace. We have one peak here. Um, we have two other peaks. So just we at the moment let's look takes this peak. It's uh, heading downwards which means that it's 
um, uh, that we need to invert polarity. So let's do this one. So, and you s you really notice an audible change. I hope so. And because of our averages, I just do a reset. And now we see we have the same picture. And I just uh, use the amplitude here to get more obvious. And we have our very close. It's not zero milliseconds, but it's zero point two approximately milliseconds difference between this and now we can use delay if you want to try to s put them really tie them really together as long as the guy goes on so you see now we have done the ma time matching just by comparing those things here and you also see it's a little bit chittering so yeah, but I think this is a real fine one. And now um, let's go back to start. Um, as you remember, there's been some other peaks. So let's, for example, take this one. Um, which one is this? This one, which is on approximately two, uh, two milliseconds and a little bit more. So I just add two milliseconds here. way up, sorry. Need to put it here. Two, one. So and you you notice it's sound quite similar to what we get before. But now we have a real lot of uh, delay on one of the two mics. So I prefer the method before where I choose the peak which is close to zero which would be this one here and we can do it in the other direction also go back reset and you see it's similar to doing uh, time alignment on uh, speaker systems uh, you often have more than one possibility available here this is our next one where we could take its very similar. So, because of our face circle, it's just uh, another 360 degrees between those two, and we, here is one 180. So, we have an ener main energy on, let's say, um, this one. So, we have uh, a difference of about four milliseconds and now you can use this one to calculate uh, the frequency of the main energy of our snare. So this is uh, what the threshold is for if we um, open the whole thing up without a threshold the trace will get really more uh, unstable because any other information we got uh, bleeding in here will also create uh, some signal here and you see it's just jumpy and yeah so uh, using this threshold value will help us on the impulsive signals to clean up the whole thing here and get it more and more stable so you can use this for now we did it for a snare top and bottom you can use it for bass drum in and out you can use even overhead to snare using this method to uh, get your settings another thing that has been added is support for higher sample rates so uh, if you're using uh, a CO IO device which I think is in most cases true um, now you can you have the possibility to choose uh, a bunch of different sample rates to interface with the life and yeah 
perhaps this is for the interfacing, the internal calculations are still done by 48 or 44.1k. So it's just to uh, connect to uh, systems like Dante networks or something like that, which are running with a different sample rate. So I just choose here 192k for sample rate and just to show you that it's working I go over to uh, impulse response and run my oscilloscope and playback of 1k sine wave and you see it's really stable it's now um, being ups, uh, outputted with 192k and has been downsampled for display again here. You see it's working and just another thing is uh, wave player here which is now supporting higher sample rates also and also I don't see I have a war, um, something available yes we have something available here and we just so you can't see it because it's below or so you see now it's playing and uh, it has been appended, uh, expanded so it will play uh, any length of wave file. And it still has to be 48k if you're running 48k satellite setting and 44.1k if you're running satellite is 44.1 and um, straight multiples. So, so that was just a f short overview of what you can expect from the new version. There has been also a lot of internal improvements, uh, speed increase, increased speeds, uh, some fixes and also um, so the language file support has been cha changed so now you can use uh, any language file on any computer. For example let me show you this one which is not here, if we choose a Chinese one, you see it will display fine on my computer here in this German Windows settings. I have all these nice things over here. Just this one needs something to update. So, yeah, that's all for now. I hope you have enjoyed it, and well, maybe we, let me hear us again.